Hey, this is Donnie Smith. Have you ever overground metal making it too weak and too thin? Well, it's not that hard to do with these thinner metals. What about when working with body filler? Have you ever got it in cracks, gaps, other places that you don't want it? It takes quite a bit of time to get that out of there and clean it up. So if you'd like to learn some tricks, how to prevent over thinning your metal and working with thin metal, and how to keep from getting all the body filler in the places you don't want it in the first place, then you're in luck. That's what we're gonna show you in this video. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, what we're going to do to eliminate grinding a lot of the metal off is to use a DA sander. We can use 36 grit or 80. I'm using 80 here. That usually works well. It may take just a little bit longer to remove the paint coatings, but you're not going to chance grinding too much metal off. This does not take the, the amount of metal that grinding does. Now with thinner metals, I would recommend this. Now if you're working on older vehicles, you know, grinding may be a little quicker and that may uh, still work fine. Okay, now for the tip of how to eliminate getting body filler in places you don't want it. That's simply to mask it off. On the edge, you know, I don't want the body filler wrapping around the edge where I have to clean it up, so I'm going to mask that off. Any gaps, for instance here, there's a, uh, where the molding goes, you know, I don't want body filler to wrap in there where I'm having to sand it out. So I'm going to use the, the body lines that's on the car and use that as a dividing line to make nice, sharp lines at so that the body filler does not get in these areas. Okay, now I'm mixing the body filler up in the tube. I'm going to let the air out of the cap so that it'll mix well. And once I remove some of the air, I'll put the cap back on. And now I'm just going to mix it inside the tube because this hardener really does separate a lot in there. It'll be, if you don't do this, you'll have a liquid, liquidy substance that comes out and you don't want that. So be sure that you mix it up well in the tube before you use it. Now I've already got some body filler out here and I used a paint stick to put some on this mixing board and I'm going to get this hardener. I'm going to apply a strip from one edge of the body filler to the other and that usually is a pretty good mixing ratio. And notice I'm using a spreader to mix it. I'm not using a paint stick to stir it because that could put air bubbles in it. If you get air bubbles in your uh, body filler, uh, that's going to create pinholes whenever you go to sanding body filler. So it's always best to work the air bubbles out. Just uh, just spread it out on your filler until it's nice and uniform. You don't want there to be any hardener streaks. You want to mix it until it's one color. Okay, now I have the filler mixed good. It's nice, uniform, one color. We don't have any hardener streaks in it, so we know it's mixed well. I'm gonna apply the body filler. Now to do this, I'm gonna apply a tight coat first. And what that is, is where I take a, a thin coat of body filler and push really hard down on the spreader so that I push it into the metal. You know, that helps it adhere better to the metal so you don't have any problems with adhesion at a later point. Now once I get the tight coat on, I come back with a fill coat. And that's where I'm gonna put a little bit less pressure on the spreader, which allows it to fill the damaged area in. Okay, I have the fill coat applied. Now here's a tip for you to eliminate a lot of the sanding, and that is to work on your edges. Because if you have real hard edges, you know, it's gonna take uh, more sanding. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the spreader, and on the edges, I'm kind of feathering that body filler out. So that edge is a real thin layer, and you don't have that big, hard edge to try to sand out. Okay, now I let this set up for just a little bit. And uh, you don't want to do it immediately after you apply the body filler. You want to let the filler set, but you don't want it to be dry either. But as it's kind of in its green state, go ahead and pull the tape off. This will leave you nice, clean edges. And also before it fully cures, you can uh, block sand lightly. You don't want to sand too hard, just to help level some of the highs and lows. 
Okay, now I allow it to dry and started block sanding it. Now I'm starting out with 36 grit because that's going to level the filler really fast. But notice that I'm staying within the filler. My block is not sliding out onto the paint because I don't want those deep scratches getting onto the, the paint surface. I just want to level the filler. Also notice that I'm sanding in different directions. I'm not just going in at one angle the entire time, so I change it up. And what sanding in different directions does is it's going to help you get a more level surface. So always sand in different directions. Once you have it level, switch to 80 grit. That's what I'm doing here. First, I'm going to apply some guide coat. This is just to help identify highs and lows. And uh, you'll know whenever you get rid of the 30 grit, 36 grit scratches, it makes it easier to see this way. And also notice I am sanding out on the paint a little bit. I'm not going too far, but you do want to sand out further than you did with your, 30, your 36 grit. You want to make sure all 36 grit scratches are removed during this step. Okay, I finished blocking and I'm filling for high areas. And usually if you see metal spot areas like this, that's going to indicate that, that, it, that it is high. And that happens sometimes. And if it does, uh, what you need to do is get your pick hammer and lightly tap down on those metal areas. And what this is going to do is it's going to lower that metal. And here's another tip for you. If you have problems filling the body work and determining, you know, highs and lows with your hand, with your bare hand, use something like this, a wipe ball or a towel or something to put between the panel and your hand. And this may help you be able to feel the highs and lows much better. Now I'm going to use the tape because I'm going to be applying some putty. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the body filler, the edges, and that indention where the body side molding goes. I'm going to tape all that off to keep all the filler out of that. Now when using putty, uh, it lays out a little thinner than body filler, so I usually just go half waist rather than from one edge of the filler to the other. So I'm going to do about half the amount of hardener. But everything else is basically the same. Mix it till it's one uniform color. Don't want any streaks in there. And uh, the good thing about putty is it's thinner and it's easier to get a nice skim coat. But you do want to do the, uh, you know, the tight coat followed by a fill coat. 
And another thing about a putty is you can go over the entire repair area, you know, from paint edge to paint edge, and that helps any uh, imperfections you had in your sanding flaws or sanding scratches or anything like that, it's gonna fill in. And after uh, allowing it to set up for a few minutes, now I'm going to peel the tape. Now in setting finish putty, uh, I'm not going to start out with 36 grit. I'm going to start out with the 80 to level it out. And also I want to let it, let it fully dry. I really don't want to try to sand putty in its green state. So I'll allow it to dry all the way. And I'm going to get 80 on a block. And I'm going to sand it. And I'm going to cross sand it, make sure it's good and level. Once I have it leveled with 80, I'm going to use the guide coat, and then I'm going to come back with 150 to 180. I'm using 150, I believe, but anywhere between 180 and 150 will work fine for smoothing out your 80 grit scratches. And this guide coat, it'll help you identify any lows that you may have if there are any, or let you know whenever you got all the 80 grit scratches sanded out. And one last thing you want to do before you send it off, start priming it, you want to make sure it fits. You know, make sure everything aligns, make sure that your body work is right. So you're going to have to put it up to the car and make sure, you know, everything works. Always, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to share it with your friends. Give us a thumbs up, a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to go to collisionblast.com, and there we have hours of free auto body and paint training videos like this one and a lot of other resources for you. Thanks again for watching. Have a safe and productive week, and we'll see you in the next video.